Yo, what's up, warriors? Welcome back to Psychopath Exposure. My name is Kira, and this is an anti-narcissist community. We specialize in toxic relationships here. So if you're entangled with someone with a personality disorder, such as NPD, Narcissist Personality Disorder, Borderline Personality Disorder, if you're dealing with a psychopath, you've come to the right place. We've all been through this. Your story probably matches our story because only the names and faces change. These toxic people follow the same patterns, a little nuance here and there, but it's usually the same. So I'd like to welcome you to the community. And I do have a free ebook. I'd like to tell you guys right away, it's a downloadable ebook that you can get straight to your phone or your computer. It teaches you on the five steps of going no contact with a psychopath or a narcissist. Because I know a lot of you uh, in this community, you've been either discarded or you're trying to stop talking to them. You're trying to wean yourself out of that toxic entanglement. And um, you just don't know. You just don't have the strength to block them. You still check their social media. You're still triggering yourself with, with, with all these photos and, and texts that you keep reading, old emails that you keep reading. Um, in this ebook, I, just, I go into detail on how to establish those boundaries so that you can maintain a strict line of no contact so that these narcissists don't continue hoovering and messing up the progress that you've made after you've tried to heal from this horrible, horrible nightmare. So uh, just go ahead and click the link below. You'll be glad you did. And today, I'm going to talk about why it's so hard to get over the psychopath of the narcissist, even months after they've been gone. Why is it that months and months and months go by? And yet a lot of survivors, they're, they're, they just can't move on. You'd be surprised how sometimes the stories... They're all the same, but you have some people that are in like 30 year marriages and they're able to get out and just, they have this willpower to just enjoy the rest of the time that they have here. And then you have some people that have only been like a few months into the relationship, less than a year sometimes, and it's like the end of the world. And to that I say that everybody's different. We're all individuals. Some people just have, some people just headstrong, some people are more emotional. Some people, they have a lot of trauma in their past and being entangled with, with a toxic narcissist just opened up wounds that they, they didn't even know were still there and just makes things so difficult now as an adult. And there's some people that they have always been just headstrong, head over heart. And even though they were caught up for years and they were in a long-term marriage with a psychopath and they were abused and they put up with it for so long, but at some point something clicked and they're like hey you know what now I know what you are now everything makes sense screw you I'm gonna do me now I wish everybody was like that but that's not the case so go easy on yourself if you're not head over heart if you're more heart over head because the way a narcissist operates is that they they compromise your emotions and where do we where do emotions really generate they generate in your, in your psyche, in your mind. So if a narcissist is gaslighting you and they're taking you on this roller coaster of emotions, you got compromised thinking, compromised thought patterns that are creating all sorts of negative feelings, which then bring about more intrusive thoughts. So you're stuck in this little loop there, right? And this little loop, when you're conditioned to it over and over and over again, time and time and time and time again, even if the narcissist discards you and is gone for good, that's all you know. That's the only way you know how to function. You wake up in the morning, first thing in the morning you remember, oh, that's right. This person's no longer in my life. Oh, that's right. These lying sacks of shit. They're probably out with a new supply now having a ball. That's right. Damn. And it just hits you like a ton of bricks first thing in the morning. And you go through your day ruminating all these bad memories, all this betrayal, thinking, thinking, overthinking, overthinking, replaying the tape, replaying the tape, trying to figure out what went wrong. Had I, maybe had I done this, this wouldn't have happened. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe I'm the one that caused this. Drives yourself crazy, right? By the time you get home from work, you're exhausted. By the time you go to sleep, 95% of the thoughts you had were of the narcissist that's been gone for like seven or eight months already. So the brain already predicts how the next day is going to go. 
because you've conditioned to it, or let's say the narcissist conditioned you to it first, to have this pattern of thinking where the brain is like, okay, well, it's been like this for seven or eight months, so tomorrow is Tuesday, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to feel like shit right away, I'm going to think about the narcissist first thing in the morning, I'm going to dread getting up, I'm going to dread making breakfast, I'm going to dread driving to work, I'm going to dread being at work, or if you work from home, I'm going to dread being home alone, looking around, remembering when the narcissist used to be here, when we used to do it on the kitchen table, when we used to watch movies in the living room, when we used to cook in the kitchen, and now they're gone. And the brain is like, yeah, that, that's how the day is going to be. Okay, it's going to be a shitty day, so Tuesday sucks, Wednesday sucks, Thursday sucks, oh, Friday, okay, Friday feels better because the weekend's coming, but oh, that's right, but I'm going to be alone in the weekend because the narcissist discarded me, so the weekend's going to suck, and goddamn, it's Sunday night, and I got to go to work on Monday, and everybody hates Monday. So you see how you're caught in this vicious cycle, or a psycho cycle, of doom. How do you think you're going to feel better? How do you think you're going to get over these people when the brain is running on autopilot and it has nothing, really has nothing to look forward to? Have you ever noticed how the moment you make plans with somebody like randomly, like let's say just in the middle of a Wednesday night, someone actually invites you out for steak or drinks or whatever it is that you like to do and you wake up that morning, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, day sucks, but I'm actually looking forward to, to going to Benjamin's or Luger's or wherever you're gonna go have steak, right? I'm, I'm naming these big spots because I like to put that out there in the universe, like real fancy steakhouse, right? But it doesn't matter where you're going. It doesn't matter, you just get excited. You get excited because it's breaking your routine. So now, e even though you're still gonna be ruminating about the narcissist and you're probably gonna talk about them over dinner with your friend, but you are excited that you're going out to dinner. You are excited that you're not just going straight home to be alone and to binge Netflix all night. You have something to do. You, you, your, your brain is like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm still alive. I have something cool to do. Cool. So you feel good. Then you go and you have a good time. And on the way home, you know, it's like 50% is remembering, oh, that's right, now I'm going back to shit. But another 50%, depending on how cool your night went, you might be replaying that tape because we do that. We replay the good tapes sometimes too. We're like, damn, we had fun and, and I said this and they said that and then we met these people and we had these drinks and it was fun and then we went somewhere else and, and you, you're feeling good and you start getting a little bit of hope, a little bit of spark and that creates new, brand new neurotransmitters in your, in your brain, the, you know, new avenues, new, new channels of thought that trigger new thoughts that you haven't had before. And the old thoughts, that those, old, those weeds, those, that, that dark place, right, starts getting pushed back a little. The more of the good stuff that you have, the more plans you make and, and the good times that you have, the more of, of those positive experiences you have, the more this starts getting pushed away because, you know, the light vanquishes the darkness. But if then Thursday comes and you do the same thing, you fall back into the same routine, and then Friday you're back in the same routine, and oh, that's right, and the weekend sucks, I'm going to be alone, blah, 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 blah. It's going to be a year and you're still not going to be over this person. And whoever you meet, if you meet somebody, they're not going to be good enough because you're instantly going to be comparing the new person to the narcissist. And you selectively forget how bad the narcissist really treated you. You selectively forget that they were having an affair. You selectively forget that they ignored you, they withheld intimacy from you, they lied to you, they were texting other people right in front of you, in bed, blatantly. You forget those things. You forget how they neglected your needs. You forget the anxiety you felt when you were with them. You forget that feeling of impending doom that you knew they were up to no good and you were too scared to confront them for fear that you may be right. So you swallowed. You swallowed the poison. You swallowed the lies. You swallowed the bullshit. And you had a terrible, terrible, terrible experience, terrible, terrible relationship, if you even want to call it that. But yet, you meet someone new, you don't even give them a chance. It's like, no, I don't, the brain just won't even let you because it's conditioned 
to those thought patterns. It's conditioned to, to scarcity. That's all you know. All you know is the betrayal, the abuse, and the months that it's been that you haven't heard from your narcissist ex. How many of you guys have been discarded or maybe have actually discarded them and, and, and drawn that line in the sand and just cut them off and yet every single day passes by you're still thinking like, damn, I miss them. I, man, I know I should stay no contact, but if somehow, if that little snake just found a way to weasel their way through my defenses and just, you know, just showed up and just, just had a good conversation and just gave me a heartfelt apology and we got to talk it out, maybe get a little bit of closure. And every day passes by and that never happens. And it never happens. So you start to idealize, kind of like you future fake yourself, you idealize a scenario in the future where you guys may talk again. And that keeps you going. As toxic as that is, your brain releases a little bit of dopamine because it sounds exciting. It's like, hey, we haven't, seen each other, we haven't seen each other in six months, you know. Maybe we see each other now and we've both turned a new leaf because, you know, a lot, of people, a lot of you people think that you're the narcissist. A lot of people think this was your fault. So, you know, so it's like, okay, I'm going to be better this time and maybe they're better a little bit. It's all BS. Again, intrusive thoughts, compromised thinking, erroneous thinking, untrue. But you're not giving yourself a chance to get over them because you're still idealizing a situation where that could work because that's all you know. And believe me, I've been there. Believe me, I've been there. And a lot of this behavior stems from your childhood too. How was your childhood? How was actually, let's not even talk about childhood. How was your teenage life? How, were, how good were you guys in high school when it came to dating? Were you the type that would meet someone and idealize that that's it, this is the person I'm going to marry? You didn't even have their phone number. You, would, you just said hi to them in class and, and they said hi back and you already created this narrative in your mind. If you were doing that type of shit since high school, doesn't it make sense that now as an adult, you're re-manifesting the same situation again, hopefully so for you to learn the lesson? But instead, what's happening is that you're stuck. You're stuck in that loop again. You're stuck in that paradigm. You're stuck in that level. You haven't defeated the boss. You got to defeat the boss to get to level two, right? And right now, the boss is that narcissist. You got to defeat it. Otherwise, you're not going to grow. So you got to start doing things differently. Otherwise, you're never going to get over them. I know people that have been in this shit for years, years, and they just refuse to get the help they need, they just want to vent, they just want to complain, they refuse to do the work. Oh, Bakita, but what about this? Oh, Bakita, but what about that? I said, what about it? What about it? You're, you're still looking for Chinese food at a McDonald's restaurant. You know what I'm saying? You're looking for love in a person that's incapable of love. Science has proven that the, the, the mind of the psychopath through brain scans is different than someone that's not a psychopath. They do not have the ability to love or to have empathy. They don't feel it. They know that they can't feel it or experience it. They will tell you. A psychopath will tell you blatantly that they have a problem with empathy. They will tell you. They have no shame. A psychopath doesn't feel shame. They accept fully what they are. This is what they are. Have you guys ever watched Dexter? He knows what he is. He's trying to be a better person. He's trying, but he's living a lie. His own sister calls him a monster. He knows he's a monster and he can't help but giving in to his dark passenger because at the end of the day, he's a psychopath and he's, he fakes emotion, he fakes love, he fakes the things that so, the, the social constructs, 
the way you're supposed to behave in a society, he fakes that so that he can fit in. If you don't know that you're dealing with a psychopath, if you don't know that your partner has narcissistic personality disorder, then you're going to be duped for a long time. But once you know, you're watching these videos, now you know, now you can see it, right? You got to stop this wishful thinking that your situation, you're going to be the one that's going to fix them. You're going to be the exception here. And your partner is going to change. Your partner is actually going to get help. They're going to go see a therapist and the therapist is going to fix their psychopathy. Yeah, good luck. Not going to happen, but good luck. So rather than moving forward, giving yourself a chance to heal and have a good life, you're doubling down on your misery. And then you wonder why you can't get over the psychopath or the narcissist. What are you doing? Are you exercising? Because exercise stimulates the brain. Get better thoughts. What type of food are you putting into your body? Are you eating trash? Because if you eat trash, you're not going to function at your best. Are you staying in bed all day? Are you just binging TV shows after TV shows? Are you saying no to invitations? You know when people invite me to go to places that I don't even want to go? I've made a commitment to say yes and just show up for one hour. My commitment is to go for one hour. Hey, I, got a lot of, I have another engagement, but I'm going to try and make it for an hour. And they're so grateful that you show up, right? They're so grateful. You're there for an hour. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't work for you, if you don't like the vibe, if you're uncomfortable, you show up, you, say, you, you mingle with the people, with the person that invited you, whatever, you take place in the activity, and then you go. And they're, they're, It's like, hey, thanks for coming. At least you came. And you know what happens nine out of ten times? You actually end up having a good time. And you're like, shit, I'm glad I came. Wow, like, in your mind, your mind is so polluted with darkness, that you can't even fathom that whatever invitation you got, that you could actually have a good time. Because the mind is polluted. It's polluted with this narcissist shit. But you just go. Just go and do it. I tell you guys, do it. I don't care whether you feel like it or not. You got to do the work. Just do it. In doing so, change starts happening. You can't keep doing the same things, which in most cases is doing nothing, and expect a different result because that's the definition of insanity. Are you insane? So that's why it gets so hard to move on. Because we don't allow ourselves the blessings that the universe gives us. We, we, we reject them. We reject the opportunities. We reject the people. We just want to either be isolated or with the narcissist. And it's like, guys, um, none of those two sound good. One of them sounds better than the other, but, but none of those two are what you guys signed up for. I'm sure you wanted something more out of life. So if you want change in your life, if you want to get over these people, you have to actively start doing different things. You have to actively start moving. And unfortunately, and I hate to say this, but unfortunately we are hardwired to mate. To, to look for, for love, to be attracted to the opposite sex. We are hardwired. We are hardwired. And the instant you hook up with someone new, I know you don't want to hear it, but it's true. The minute you hook up with someone new, you start to heal. Because your brain just realizes, oh wait, I'm not in scarcity. There, there actually is someone else out there in the world that loves me and is attracted to me and wants to sleep with me, and wants to hold my hand, and wants to have dinner with me. There's actually someone else in this world that can have pillow talk with me. There's actually someone else in this world that I connect with. There's actually someone else in this world that I connect with, and it's even a better connection than, than what I have with this toxic person. Suddenly you start seeing clearer. Now, what's the paradox with that? The paradox is that when you're mentally compromised and broken after a discard it's hard to meet new people 
new people can sense that you're needy and broken, so they don't want to be a part of you. But you need, you need the new person, right, to get you through this. So again, it's this crazy paradox that unfortunately um, something has to change in order for, for it to, to work. Does that make sense? Something has to change in that pattern for it to work, for it to manifest itself. Because as long as you're broken and needy, you're probably not going to attract a healthy person because a healthy person with boundaries is not going to want to be with someone that has a traumatic past and is broken and is just talking about their crazy ex. We're trying to be that healthy person that has those boundaries, that meets new people, and doesn't make 80% of the conversation on that first date about the psychopath, right? In order to do that, you got to heal and you got to take action. You got to do the work. It doesn't work the other way around. So that's the paradox in this. And, and that's where a lot of people get stuck. So even though you don't have the motivation to get up and do work and exercise and eat right and give yourself an opportunity to have fun again and force yourself to do the things you used to love until your brain realizes that, hey, I, I still love. I still love painting. I still love playing guitar. I, yeah, I enjoy doing That's right. I used to love doing this. Wow. You have to do it. So you can, your brain's like, oh yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I, I loved when I used to do this. Some people like going shopping. Go to the mall. Go shopping. It's Christmas time. Go Christmas shopping. Enjoy it. Enjoy the Christmas music. Enjoy the butter cookies. Buy a Christmas tree. Decorate it. Have fun. But don't just stay in bed thinking, oh, I'm, uh, I don't feel like doing that. Oh, no, no. Because the brain will come up with 5 million excuses not to do it and keep you in that toxic, dark, vicious cycle of doom because it's familiar. The brain knows as long as you stay in that vicious cycle, even though you're miserable, you're safe and you're alive and you're still breathing. But change is in the unknown. Especially when your life is not working for you right now. Like, Doesn't it make sense to try something new? Your emotions are in the way. Shut them out. Do it anyway. Do the thing you got to do anyway. And you'll see. You'll see that even if it's only 1% today, 1% tomorrow, 1% the next day, that starts to stack up. And before you know it, you're feeling 50% better. And 50% better is a lot better than 0% better. Or like I like to say, 100% fucked. So... I know it takes time, but if you'd like to accelerate this healing process, if you need a little kick in the ass, if you want someone in your corner, I do offer a private one-on-one -on -one online coaching mentoring program, and we work together, just you and I, it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. We work through these things, we untangle the roots, we set up action plans, accountability, we break through the curse of the trauma bond. I help you to have that confidence and develop that courage that you have inside of you. You don't know you have it, but you have it. And I can show you the way. I can help wake you up and be in your corner so that you can finally get over this insanity, this thing that just came and, and totally dismantled your life plans. And now you've lost all motivation to continue. I can show you how this situation happened for you. Not to you, but for you. Because when you do the work and you come out of this on the other side, you're going to realize that if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have the amazing life that you have now. You have to close that door so the other door opens. But the hallway is a bitch. Are you willing to walk through that hallway to get to the brand new door where heaven awaits? Or do you rather stay in hell where it's comfortable? Because believe me, it's not comfortable. That's another delusion. So feel free to reach out. My email is psychopathexposure.com. You can send me a short briefing of your situation, not too long. Got to make sure we're a good fit for each other. If you're serious, only if you're serious and working together, reach out. You can get more details on my website. I have a link in the description below. And we'll set something up at your convenience. Um, if this is your first time in the channel and you got some value from this information, if you're new to the world of narcissists, um, please subscribe to the video and click on the bell icon so that every time I drop a new video like this, you'll get notified straight to your phone. 
And of course, if you like the video, please share it and hit a like, a thumbs up on the video. Really appreciate that. Um, guys, continue to share your experiences, your strength and hope in the comments. I love seeing the community grow. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. My name is Kira. This is Psychopath Exposure. Stay strong. Stay vigilant, guys. Love yourselves. Put yourselves first. And I'll see you next time. Peace.